Once again, this is part two of When I Met Craig DeVries. This is a, a, as a response to a request from Master Jose Gonzalez in, in New Jersey. I assume you're still in Hamilton, New Jersey. Um, a little bit more that I know about him. You said you were a godon under Eddie Andahar, I think, or Andajar. I hope I'm saying that right. A nationally and internationally rated kickboxer back in the PKA days. And uh, aside from his traditional martial arts background, he has a boxing background, kickboxing background. He's a kickboxing trainer. He's worked with MMA guys. Um, and he says he does a lot of, of working with these pro fighters as a sparring partner as well as a trainer. So if you're in that region, look him up. Look him up. Um, certainly, from, from the communication he's giving me, uh, I, all the names he's mentioned, all the things that he talked about were... I know that, that they're true and they're real, and he's an old, you know, previous generation from me. So you guys, uh, your generation, helped my generation by setting a foundation that we built on. Uh, for example, uh, the Tang Sudo and the Goju Ryu people, um, huge influence in the Hamilton Trenton region. Hamilton Pal, Hamilton Police Athletic League, boxing. I know when I trained at the New Brunswick Boxing Gym. Uh, a lot of fighters would come from Trenton to spar with our guys. And they were very competitive, fierce. Even even the smaller ones, the ones that, that you know didn't look that well built, they were just tough fighters. They could hit hard and they could take a hit and they'd come right at you. You know, they there was no backing down. They they'd go nose to nose and I remember seeing a lot of great infighting from those guys. Right? And some head movement. So <clears throat> Craig DeVries he, uh, Jeff, I think, was, was toying with the idea or wanted, wanted um, A, Craig to come in and work out with us more. And B, I think, you know, I was hoping, I was hoping that, that Craig was going to be an instructor there because he's better than Jeff, okay? Uh, as far as his movement and his sparring and everything, Jeff wasn't a slouch, but... I mean, you can tell when someone is head and shoulders above above someone in their level of, of athletic prowess and skill and everything. And at the time, you know, in the 80s, uh, his, his techniques and his teaching style, his fighting style, we were all about it back then. So um, I saw him one more time shortly after that. There was a tournament, and Craig showed up, and... He had on a, one of, a more distinctive uniform, one I haven't s seen since, which was the white gi bottom and a brown gi top. You don't see a lot of brown gi tops ever, anywhere. He had a brown gi top and he had his, his patch on it from Okinawa. And um, he was just there to help referee. So, uh, but even then, like, you know... He was the kind of person you couldn't help but keep your eyes on. You couldn't help but notice him. A, because he was loud. Okay. B, <laughs> he's, he, and I don't know if he judged Okada, but you could see him judging fighting. Because somebody would score a point. And uh, the, the center ref would point, point to the judges and, you know, what do you call? And the other guy would be like, point red or point white, right? And Craig would... Point to the competitor that he saw getting the point, right? And he would be like, Phew! reverse punch, Com you know, Com point red. Or he'd, you know, come up and snap out a roundhouse kick and hold it. Like he would demonstrate the technique that that he, um, he saw scoring. So if he would either replicate the technique or if he wasn't sure if it was a back fist or a reverse punch, he'd, he'd throw a reverse punch. If he wasn't sure if it was a roundhouse kick or a hook kick, you know, or, or he, he thought a kick landed, he would throw out a roundhouse kick or side and say, kick, point red, point white. So you couldn't help but look at this guy because his technique was awesome, okay? His technique was awesome and he was loud and he was brash. Um, <laughs> I didn't get to talk to him much during the tournament, but he's just the kind of guy walking around. You just... You know, it, it's like um, a combination of doing things to actively seek your intention. I, and I think some of it was inten intentional. He was that guy. And just having a presence where you couldn't not 
give him some attention. All right, visual attention. Then, at one point, I was, um, I think I was done doing what I was doing. But there was a, uh, a Kabuto ring going on. So, this, d different competitors are going up there with, with different weapons. And this black guy comes up. He's got black gi, gi pants, brown belt, white gi, starched, immaculate, proud erect bearing, and an eye patch. Right, so he looked like some kind of pirate, and he had two sighs thrust into his into his belt. Again, turns out this guy was a, was an ex marine too, right? So he struts up and he's like, you know, boo, 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 and said the name of the foreman, did this sigh form, and it's fairly complicated sigh form. Um, if I was to grade his performance, I would say that that it, it had all kinds of technical correctness it just it wasn't super flashy and it, and it lacked a certain amount of explosiveness and speed as compared to the other weapons in the ring but his weapons were full weight okay a lot, a lot of the people in the 80s were starting to switch over to lighter weight weapons so that may have had something to do with it and even then i think he took a second or a third and there were black belts in the ring so at some point i'm, I'm going off into the dressing room to change and I see Craig walking, strutting in. You know, his hands are in fist. He's kind of walking in. And at the top of his lungs in this dressing room, he's like, Who does Kempo? Who does Kempo? And <laughs> the guy who did the side for him is like, Hey, me. <laughs> so he comes, he says, uh, You're doing Okinawan Kempo. And they start talking. Turns out that guy had also been stationed in Okinawa, was also a Marine, and had trained under some of the same instructors. So they were just yucking it up, having a good old time. And, uh, you know, again, Craig, 37 years old, you know, he's taking off his gi top, he's got the six pack, he's like, you know, looking in the mirror, flexing. I mean, you know, this guy, Master Gonzalez, you're, you're saying that he could have been a nationally rated competitor, a nationally rated kickboxer, especially if he had learned how to box. I mean, certainly that's probably true. Okay? Certainly. Uh, I, I, in a sense, sparred with him, but certainly he was absolutely positively not going all out. And it was a good lesson for a 16-year-old when you can spar. He had the skill of a high-level black belt. He had the skill of a, you know master level black belt. He wasn't wearing one, but he had that skill for sure. To spar someone of that caliber, of that intensity, but yet not be abused, you know, not not using your strength and your skill to beat up on a 16-year-old who, you know, cannot match you. It was a great experience and a great inspiration. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, uh, the, the, whole, the whole incident stayed in my mind. I'd actually forgotten his name until you mentioned it in your comment section, right? Um, the other thing I'll say about him is, uh, after that I didn't see him again, and I was like, Jeff, what happened to him? And he's like, ah, he's going through a bunch of stuff, and I don't think he'll be back. He won't be back. I'm like, why? Do you have a fall on? He goes, nah, he's got some personal problems. You know, he's drinking a lot or something. And he did seem like a guy who could be very manic, so a person that can be incredibly manic can also be depressive. Um, I know, I believe he was married at the time, and I believe he had a daughter, and, uh, you know, he was gainfully employed or whatnot. So, uh, but, you know, do I think he could have been a, a world-class kickboxer? Obviously, but I actually think that would be a waste of his talent. I think he would have made a fantastic movie villain or bad guy, you know? The, the kind of guy that, that you have to fight your way through 20 or 30 minions and, you know, he's sitting on, on his throne in his fancy robe or something. And after you've beat the last minion, he's like, ha, ha, you have reached the final level. And then he, you know, gets up and you have a duel to the death. And, you know, I think it, he, he's the kind of guy that probably wouldn't have wanted to be the guy that lost a match in a movie. But on the other hand, if, if he was offered enough money, I could just see him hamming that up. I'm sorry to, to hear of his passing. Just, just that, that brief three times that I met him. As you can see, I'm smiling because he just put so much energy into everything he did. And to see someone put that much energy into something, especially as a brown belt, when you're kind of getting tired of this and you're, you're not going anywhere, it sort of 
recharging and that's what it did to me so um again i hope nothing i've said is incorrect or untrue if it contradicts what you knew about him i'm sorry i can only give it to you from my perspective certainly from the, the brief time i met him i had a tremendous amount of admiration for the man's energy and talent and skill and relating this just makes me sort of miss uh, my old haunts in hamilton um shout out to those schools in hamilton that are still there shout out to um shins karate shout out to uh what do we have there these days still? Princeton Academy of Martial Arts is still operating in that region under new ownership. Parks Taekwondo is still there. I don't know if Everson's Karate is Karate is still there. Uh, that was a school that's been open a while. Um, of course, JKA Shotokan is still there. Master Gonzalez tells me that Master Kisaka at age 90 is still teaching. Still gets out there and teaches a class. So that's just great. And uh, Master Gonzalez, if you if you send me a personal email, I'd certainly like to communicate with you. It's been great, and I do hope that you enjoyed this video. So have a fantastic day, sir.